Dude, it's been a good week, man. We've been kind of trying to burn it. We, it was a bit different because we had like that family camping trick I was talking about. And, but the first part of the week, I was really just trying to get as many hours into this bus as I could. And a lot of that took doing all this trim for the bus. Emily always likes adding these like dimensions and like kind of like board and batten or like wainscoting to the wall. It's just to add it some depth and not just have all these flat surfaces. So I spent a good portion of the, of the week kind of doing that. It turned out really good and then like we slowly but surely started sanding the floors to get those refinished because we want to keep the factory floors because these things are 76 years old so it's really neat to have these in the character of the bus and especially kind of going in with like the whole harry potter thing we're like then let's try to use that so we've got to sand off all this black paint it's like 76 years old so it's take so then i was able to make some progress on the flipper bus we got the roof rack done and it's pretty cool because like it, the bus is only like 22 feet long but we're able to still fit 1500 watts of solar and of course like you know me going on a road trip i don't want to not have a clean car driving down the road so especially if we're going to spend like six hours in it i'm going to make sure this thing is as clean as it possibly can be so i spent a good portion of wednesday night finally polishing this thing getting it cleaned up getting it ready for the summer season so that any salt or rain that hits it will just wash right off then we drove up to the mountains and it's like six hours, 330 miles, I think it what it was. So it wasn't anything terrible. We stopped midway through and got some like nice lawn chairs because I'm just tired of buying $9 lawn chairs. I'm like, so if I'm gonna have these things for the next 10 years, I might as well get some good ones. And so we did that. Then we got to, I think it was Roan Mountain State Park and my father-in-law does these like weekend family camping trips. And it's awesome, dude. Like, honestly, it's probably one of my favorite times of the year because I know that I get this designated time to spend with all of my family, like all of Emily's family. Like her sisters are there, my brother-in-laws are there, um, all the nieces and nephews are there. So we all get to like hang out and do the family stuff. Like, and I think it was the second day we went to this creek. I started skipping rocks and then Milo grabbed a rock and threw it in and Ella Rose grabbed a rock and threw it in. And then Luke Henry grabbed a rock and threw it in. And then we've got three little toddlers like grabbing these rocks and trying to walk through the creek and see how big of a splash we can get. It's those simple things. Like, yes, we lived in a bus, but that was two years ago. And like getting back to the simplicity of like, we don't have to do something expensive or elaborate all the time, but we can go into a creek and throw some rocks and my kids are gonna just have a blast. And we did that for like an hour and it cost no money. But then my father-in-law actually surprised Milo with a fishing pole. So he was able to fish for the first time, freaking loved it. Like it's cool because I remember fishing with my grandfather at probably four oh, and was, my grandfather had a pier on, on Chesapeake Bay and we would go fishing all the time and that's just not something that I've been able to in, instill in Milo yet because we've always just kind of been floating around. But he finally went fishing, freaking loved it. So now I'm like pumped to get him a fishing pole, get me a fishing pole because he was able to do it with my, with my father-in-law, his granddad. Perfect, you did good. He got away again. So fishing's hard, easy, is it was a cool like, experience to see them connect and do that. So I'm really excited to like have him out here and like actually go like deep sea fishing and saltwater fishing, like doing what I used to do as a kid because I used to fish like every weekend. Like going to my grandfather's or my grandparents' house, we did it every weekend. We would catch striper and croakers and crabs and all the things, and it's cool to like now implement that in my kids' life. So you're along the Smokies and the Blue Ridge Parkway. One of my favorite things to do is where I'm at, like find the highest peak of elevation. And this place is like high. Like I think it's one of the highest points in Tennessee, if not North Carolina. But if we did this trail, I want to think it was like Runner's L or something. It was right along the, the Appalachian Trail, but it was 6,200 feet, like really, really high. And it was like June 9th, June 10th. And we were at the top of this mountain, I think it was like 55 degrees. We get up to the top of it and like it's just it's just crazy to see what god has created of all the different types of ecosystems and mountain plains and all this beauty that's out there but it was cool like being up there emily's a champ like she had adeline attached to her stomach the entire time it was like a i think it was a thousand foot elevation climb and a mile and a half up there and then we had to do it back hey dude I can't do this! 
Tyler Rosie, you're doing great. So then the following day, we're at, we went to Grandfather Mountain, which I think is the highest point in North Carolina. Like, dude, it was astounding. Like, the road to get up there was crazy. I pull up to the ledge of, like, where we're supposed to park, to, and Emily, like, starts kind of freaking out because like, all you see is, like, the open sky. You don't see where the road st starts or ends. Uh, you have to walk across this springing br swinging bridge. Emily is not a fan of it. Ella Rose is a spaz, so we don't want to take her. And then Milo just wants to go because his cousins are going and is really excited. So I'm holding Adeline on my stomach. We're walking across this, like, swinging bridge, which is super scary. Um, down there. That, is that big down? Yeah, that's so far. That's, that's really <laughs> but we, get, we get across and like he's doing pretty good. He's able to like climb on the rocks and do the things, but I'm holding his hand the entire nice. time because if he makes right, one right slip, here. like it could be pretty pretty gnarly. Good job, bro. We're up there taking some pictures and like soaking it all in. And then I'm trying to like hold Milo's hand back and on the way back, he's like, dad, like let go. I'm like, no dude, I, I have to protect you. I've got to let you, I've got to make sure you're safe. And of course, like my little five year old is bigger than I think, and I know you're doing such a good job, bro. I do. Yeah, you're doing really well. Freaking me out. Hey, I don't know. I, I just didn't expect that to happen with my five year old. Like, I, I guess I expected him to want me to be around a little bit more to protect him and be safe, and not that he doesn't want that. But I, I guess he wants more of his independence than I wanted to give him at the time. Like, I feel like I do a pretty good job, like, let my kids be them and do them. But he just, at this moment, he was like, Dad, like, you're not always going to be around. Like, you're going to have to let me do it by myself sometimes and let me figure it out. He's like, I'm smart. I can, I can do it. And of course, I'm being like the, the typical dad of like, Dad, no, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm supposed to protect you. I'm supposed to do these things. Hey. Yeah. Yep, you're doing such a good job. I do. But hey, I still gotta trust you. I still gotta protect you, right? But yeah, like he wanted to walk by himself and do it and I have to give it to him. Like he was able to do what he set out to do and, and walk up along the ridge with no issues. Um, Good job, dude. But it was it was just an interesting moment because I remember realizing that the baby phase I thought was gonna last a lot longer, but at six months it was basically over. Like once they can start holding up their heads and sitting up by themselves, they're not a hundred percent dependent on you anymore. Like they don't need you to be around all the time. They don't need you to hold them all the time. And I thought that was gonna last for like at least a year, but at six months Milo just kind of wanted to sit up and look around and explore the world and the earth and I guess I, I this hit me t at this trip because now he's on this next venture of wanting to do things more independently as well and not make not need me to protect him the entire time so it was interesting like I don't know I just thought that that, that would not come so soon um, so now I need to pay attention to that with Ella Rose and Adeline because that's gonna approach really soon and I need to make sure that I soak up the I need you around, daddy hold me as much as I can. Um, but it was a good trip, dude. Like I'm super excited to have done that. We did a couple of like other hikes and things and just kind of went to a waterfall. Next in my paddle. Good job! <laughs> Whoa! But it was 
cool, like kind of being out in the middle of nowhere again and being in a cabin in the hills. And we had no cell phone service whatsoever, so we really just were present, really available to the life that was happening around us. No distractions, able to eat popsicles and hang out and hold Adeline and, and talk with the family and have fires and like do all the things. It was cool, like uh, this trip might have been one of my favorites so far. Hello, Rosie. <gasps> Hi. Popsicles. You good? All over your face. Hey, look. Let's see. Look at my face. I see it all over it. They will see it. They will see it? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And then we got back and kind of jumped back into the grind like I had missed, I think we got back on Tuesday and I've got a bunch of stuff to do. So I just kind of got back into work and did the things. And then Friday it was Emma and I's nine year wedding anniversary, which is crazy to think we've been together for nine years. Um, and this time we actually had a babysitter. We don't feel like kind of have a, like, we have a standard babysitter now. And it's awesome, like I get to go on dates again with my wife, which is weird because since Milo has been born five years ago, six years ago, we haven't gone on a bunch of dates, like maybe a handful, um, but now it's kind of turning into a routine thing. So we're almost kind of like dating again, first time, because we're now spending one-on-one -on -one independent time together. So it's like, we're not having to be distracted every 15 seconds with a kid. But we went to dinner and then we stopped by the new ice cream shop in the building. And uh, then we went into the mail room and took a selfie because that's what you do at your nine year wedding anniversary with three kids. Um, but it was good. Like we got to spend time together. We got to dream about what she wants to do, where we want our life to go. Just like what we did nine years ago. Um, and then of course, like finish off the week, cleaning the cars and freshening up the house and hanging out with the family. But yeah, I just wanted to jump on here and use the content that's in my phone and I figured that this is a good way to use that stuff is to put it on a timeline and, and tell about the week and share the story. Um, the next few weeks are going to be crazy, um, so definitely stay tuned to that. But thank you so much for watching. I'd like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. If you could subscribe, we really, really appreciate it. A lot is happening, a lot's going to happen, and yeah, here we go.